Zhang Ping said he wanted to check out and move, and Lu Xiaojun asked, Why change houses when it's fine? Where can you find such a cheap place? Zhang Ping thumped the wall and said with a gloomy face, It's still better than hearing people fight at night. Fight? Who's fighting? Lu Xiaojun wasn't pretending, he genuinely didn't catch on. But Zhang Ping thought he was faking it and raised his voice in frustration, Fight. At night. Fighting in bed. Isn't that clear enough? What have you been doing every night? Don't you know it yourself? Lu Xiaojun understood now, Zhang Ping was annoyed with him and Su Hui for being too noisy at night. Lu Xiaojun admitted he was a bit at fault in this matter. When Zhang Ping had set his sights on Su Hui and wanted to pursue her, Lu Xiaojun was the first to know. Zhang Ping considered him a good buddy, sharing everything and seeking his advice. However, Lu Xiaojun poured cold water on the idea, saying, Why her? She has a bad reputation because of her mom's business. Don't end up with a child not knowing whose it is. Thousands may pursue her, but tens of thousands may have had her. At that time, Zhang Peng's feelings for Su Hui were just budding, not yet irreplaceable. Upon Lu Xiaojun's advice, he gave up. After all, a good brother shouldn't harm him, right? Little did he expect that later, Lu Xiaojun's grandmother rented a room to Su Hui. Her mom was busy with work, and living together was inconvenient. In daily encounters, Lu Xiaojun discovered that Su Hui wasn't as promiscuous as people claimed. Her cheerful demeanor was typical of a girl her age, not frivolous. Unaffected by her mom's profession, she was confident, not insecure or delicate. Cooking and eating alone, listening to music and watching dramas after work, occasionally bursting into laughter, her carefree nature had a hint of cuteness. She often borrowed oil, salt, soy sauce, vinegar, and clothespins from Lu Xiaojun's grandmother. Sometimes he teased her, refusing to lend them to her, and she playfully snatched them. The interaction between them gradually developed a connection. However, Lu Xiaojun didn't dare tell Zhang Ping about his relationship with Su Hui. He took a big detour, introducing a girlfriend to Zhang Ping. Only when Zhang Ping was deeply involved with the new girl did Lu Xiaojun confess his past with Su Hui. Zhang Ping indeed felt uneasy. When he pursued Su Hui, he devalued her, but in the end, Lu Xiaojun got together with her. Yet, since Lu Xiaojun had put effort into helping him find a girlfriend, he swallowed the resentment. Later on, Lu Xiaojun joined the same company as Zhang Ping, and due to the rundown dorms, they decided to rent a place together. After nearly half a year, Zhang Ping broke up with his girlfriend. Meanwhile, Su Hui enthusiastically joined their company. With three people unable to share one room, Lu Xiaojun rented the adjacent room for himself. Young men and women are like dry wood and a fierce fire, things did get a bit noisy. However, Lu Xiaojun never expected that the nighttime sounds between him and Su Hui would reach Zhang Peng's ears. It wouldn't have bothered him if it were any other woman, but it had to be Su Hui. Zhang Ping felt uncomfortable and had grievances, which was understandable. Not only did Zhang Ping want to change houses, but he also wanted to change his workplace. He complained that the assembly line he worked on was too exhausting, and the foreman was constantly causing trouble for him. Seeing other nearby factories hiring, he expressed his intention to give it a try. To cover the expenses of renting a new place and buying necessities, Lu Xiaojun discussed with Su Hui and gave Zhang Peng a few thousand yuan. Zhang Peng accepted the money with a stiff and awkward, thank you, that seemed less sincere than saying nothing at all. After Zhang Peng left, the room was empty, but some scattered items remained. Lu Xiaojun wanted to see if there was anything usable, only to find a series of pits on the wall. They looked like they were made by fingernails or scratched with a key. When they first rented the place, this wall was clean and smooth, without a single pit. Lu Xiaojun imagined Zhang Peng, on countless nights, leaning against the wall, listening to the indescribable sounds of the woman he had once liked with another man, feeling so uncomfortable that he resorted to scratching the wall with his fingernails. Later, Zhang Ping didn't rent a place and stayed in the dormitory. He never repaid Lu Xiaojun the money for renting the room. When Su Hui asked about it, Lu Xiaojun said, We've been good buddies for many years, and he used to borrow money from me all the time. Why worry about the small amount? Su Hui laughed, You always say you have a great relationship with him, but I've been here for almost half a year, and I don't see you two being that close. You claim he's your buddy, but it seems like you're often enthusiastic while he keeps a cold distance. Lu Xiaojun smiled without responding. He certainly wouldn't tell Su Hui that the reason his relationship with Zhang Ping had become like this was because of her. 
Thinking about it, Lu Xiaojun felt a pang in his heart. He believed that he owed Zhang Peng. Since Zhang Ping moved to the new factory, their chances of meeting decreased. Although the two factories weren't far apart, every time Lu Xiaojun invited him for supper or karaoke, Zhang Peng would decline, citing exhaustion from work. Initially, Lu Xiaojun didn't think much of it until one night at the night market, where he unexpectedly saw Zhang Ping drinking beer with a group of people at a street stall. That's when Lu Xiaojun realized that Zhang Peng was intentionally avoiding him. Su Hui felt sorry for Lu Xiaojun, you treat him like a brother, but how does he treat you? You're so devoted to him, but he's heartless. However, things didn't go as planned. When you warmly approached someone, and they refused to engage, you'd think it's better not to associate with them. Yet, when they faced trouble, you'd be the first person they thought of. Zhang Peng was caught stealing from the new factory, taking materials from the warehouse to sell. The factory didn't involve the police, stating that if he repaid the stolen money, they wouldn't press charges. He sold the stolen goods at a low price, and the total repayment amounted to 40,000. 40,000? Lu Xiaojun and Su Hui together earned a monthly salary of only 6,000. In the year and a half they had been saving, they had accumulated just over 60,000. This money was intended for their wedding. Su Hui's mom had neglected her since childhood, and Lu Xiaojun only had a grandmother, relying on the monthly rent for survival. If they were to get married, they could only rely on their own hard-earned savings. Now, with Zhang Ping needing 40,000, Su Hui naturally refused. Su Hui said, Lu Xiaojun, this money isn't just yours, it belongs to both of us. If you give him the money, what will happen to us? Will we still get married? Despite feeling sorry for the money, Lu Xiaojun couldn't bear to see Zhang Ping go to jail. He tried to reason with Su Hui, but she adamantly refused. So, he became stubborn. Ignoring Su Hui's desperate pleas, Lu Xiaojun forcibly took the card from her hands. Su Hui cried heart-wrenchingly, and Lu Xiaojun felt equally distressed. He genuinely pitied Su Hui, but he had been friends with Zhang Ping since childhood, with Zhang Ping always treating him like an older brother. At this point, Lu Xiaojun felt a sense of responsibility. He believed that Zhang Ping was living with a lingering resentment, and there was a hint of a break the pot and shatter it attitude. Lu Xiaojun paid the 40,000 to the factory on behalf of Zhang Ping, and the factory spared him from imprisonment. Looking at Zhang Ping, disheveled and dirted, Lu Xiaojun asked him why he resorted to theft. Zhang Ping replied, I've done it. What's the use of talking about it now? How much money do you have in your account? 20,000. Can you lend it to me first? I want to go out and explore. We used to talk about going out together to make a fortune. Now, you're with Su Hui, and you won't be joining me. I won't trouble you. Just lend me some money, and I'll pay you back, principal and interest, in the future, okay? Lu Xiaojun hesitated. The 40,000 had already driven Su Hui mad, and giving him the remaining 20,000 would only complicate things when he had to explain to Su Hui later. What's the matter? Can't do it? Zhang Ping looked at Lu Xiaojun with a disbelieving expression. Okay, okay. Zhang Ping took the money and left, unaware that Lu Xiaojun and Su Hui had broken up because of him. Su Hui said it wasn't about the money but about Lu Xiaojun valuing Zhang Ping too much. She, with no family to rely on in her life, thought she had found a support in Lu Xiaojun. She was willing to endure any hardship as long as he was there. However, he, for the sake of a so-called brother, disregarded everything. Lu Xiaojun didn't want to part ways with Su Hui. After getting heavily drunk, he clung to her, crying loudly and begging her not to leave. Taking advantage of the alcohol, he explained the unpleasant situation between him and Zhang Peng. However, he didn't go into detail, only mentioning that initially, he felt Zhang Peng wasn't suitable for her. But later, he got together with her, and that's why Zhang Peng resented him. It's not that we weren't suitable. You thought my mom was involved in unsavory business, and I'm impure too. You said the children we might have wouldn't know whose they are, just some cheap goods for others to ride on, right? Lu Xiaojun's heart trembled. Where did you hear that? Who else could it be? Naturally, your good buddy Zhang Peng. Didn't he tell you that he approached me before leaving? Lu Xiaojun's heart sank. His eyes flickered with a dim light. He was disappointed, heartbroken, and in disbelief. Su Hui wouldn't have known those words if Zhang Ping hadn't told her. And what was Zhang Ping's purpose in telling Su Hui? To make her hate him, thus achieving the goal of breaking them up? He had thought that Zhang Ping merely harbored some resentment, not genuine hatred. 
Zhang Ping had only silently admired Su Hui, if he had truly loved her at that time, how could he give up so easily because of a couple of remarks? For the first time, Lu Xiaojun felt that his brotherhood with Zhang Ping was so fragile and vulnerable to a single blow. Zhang Ping returned five years later, now wealthy, wearing designer brands, and driving a BMW. To redeem himself, he gathered many former colleagues from the old factory for a grand dinner. He also invited Lu Xiaojun, but Lu Xiaojun declined, citing the need to take care of his grandmother, without mentioning a visit from Zhang Peng. Zhang Peng had already forgotten the days when he used to share meals at Lu Xiaojun's grandmother's house. Rumors circulated that Zhang Peng's wealth wasn't earned through his own abilities. He allegedly found a rich woman in another city who provided him with money and guided him in business. His luck worked out, and he succeeded. After accumulating wealth, he pursued romantic relationships with female classmates he had silently admired before. After a brief period, he dumped one of them, leaving her pregnant and desperate. Lu Xiaojun chose not to delve into the truths and falsehoods. In these years, he and Su Hui led a peaceful life. Though they had separated for a while initially, Lu Xiaojun had done everything to win her back. Su Hui, jokingly, asked why he didn't go see his brother now that he was so successful. Lu Xiaojun remained silent for a while before muttering, now that he's rich, if we get close to him, he'll think we have ulterior motives. What's the point? That 6,000 we lent him still needs to be repaid. With his wealth now, the 6,000 is peanuts for him, Su Hui teased. Seeing Lu Xiaojun looking embarrassed, Su Hui chuckled, I was just joking. It's been five years, and if he really intended to repay the money, he would have done it long ago. Eventually, Zhang Ping came to find Lu Xiaojun. Driving his BMW into the alley, he honked the horn persistently, as if afraid no one would notice. He claimed he had been wanting to come earlier but was too busy. Lu Xiaojun, observing the changed Zhang Peng, didn't know what to say. They had never experienced such an awkward atmosphere, with even the air tinged with discomfort. Zhang Ping stated he came to repay the debt. He took out stacks of cash from his briefcase and laid them on the table, one stack of 60,000 for the original debt and another stack of 40,000 as interest. He had promised to repay both the principal and interest when borrowing the money, and now he was fulfilling that promise. He also needed a favor from Lu Xiaojun. As Lu Xiaojun was involved in production at the factory, Zhang Ping wanted him to procure raw materials for their factory. He hoped Lu Xiaojun could persuade his colleagues, especially the inspectors, to be lenient during quality checks, facilitating the signing of contracts. Lu Xiaojun stated he was just a worker and couldn't take charge. Zhang Ping cryptically chuckled, why can't you take charge? As long as you're willing to help me, you can definitely make it happen. Lu Xiaojun responded, I'm just a small cog in the factory. I can't handle such matters. If you really want help, I can show you the sample at the warehouse. If it suits your needs, I'll talk to the factory about it. Zhang Ping seemed offended by something Lu Xiaojun said. He slammed the table, declaring, if it's so good, why would I come to you? We've been brothers for so many years, and you won't even help with this little favor? Hearing the commotion, Su Hui rushed in from the kitchen, catching the tail end of Zhang Peng's accusation, don't forget how you treated me back then. You took Su Hui from me, and you owe me for that. Lu Xiaojun's face flushed, choking on a word that wouldn't come out. However, Su Hui spoke up. Wiping oil stains off her apron, she calmly said, Zhang Peng, if you truly liked me back then, you wouldn't have given up because of a few words from Lu Xiaojun. In the end, it's because you looked down on me and wanted someone else to plan your life. Moreover, even if Lu Xiaojun owed you in this matter, he has repaid it. If you feel wronged by him, hate him, resent him, then confront him directly, either fight him or cut ties with him. But holding on to both his kindness and silently harboring hatred in your heart, what kind of nonsense is that? It's not because you didn't get me that you hate Lu Xiaojun, you're just accustomed to him treating you well, thinking he should cater to you for a lifetime. Let me tell you, even without Lu Xiaojun, I wouldn't like you. Because you're a selfish scoundrel who only cares about personal gain, a greedy wolf in sheep's clothing. Zhang Peng was infuriated, his face contorted. Then, with a sly smile, he retorted, Su Hui, it's quite a coincidence. I had a client who accompanied me to my hometown yesterday. Later, he went to visit your mom. Haha, I said, how old is your mom? Why hasn't she retired yet? This job will wear her out. Su Hui snapped, grabbed a pair of scissors, and lunged at Zhang Peng, but Lu Xiaojun quickly held her back. 
Suwi scratched, hit, and berated him, pouring out her heart. Her mother's profession was a stain on her life, and she had once distanced herself because of it. She couldn't control her mother's choices but just wanted to live her own life. Why did someone have to maliciously reopen her wounds and make her bleed? This time, Lu Xiaojun couldn't protect Zhang Peng. Snatching the scissors from Su Hui, he threw them away and chased after Zhang Peng, delivering a fierce punch. Zhang Peng got up, spat out a mouthful, and a rotten tooth came out. Lu Xiaojun warned, You can do whatever you want to me, but if you dare to degrade Su Hui, I won't spare you. I used to think I owed you, for taking my brother's woman. But today, I don't think I've wronged you. Because you don't deserve Su Hui. You don't even qualify as my brother. Get lost. Not long after this incident, rumors circulated outside that Su Hui's mother was a prostitute, and Su Hui had also engaged in such activities before joining the factory. It was undoubtedly spread by Zhang Peng. The factory was far from their hometown, and no one knew about Su Hui's past. Revealing her dark secrets was one thing, but accusing her of selling herself was another. Some said that Zhang Peng and Lu Xiaojun used to be good friends, but Lu Xiaojun was unscrupulous and stole his woman, leading to their falling out. Some believed it, and some didn't. Either way, Lu Xiaojun just shrugged it off. However, Su Hui stopped going to work because of the gossip. Lu Xiaojun commented that if she didn't want to work, as long as he was there, it was enough. Mocking Lu Xiaojun, Su Hui asked, Do you still feel sorry for Zhang Ping now? Lu Xiaojun smiled without saying a word. Two months later, Zhang Ping drove under the influence, crashing into a residential house. Fortunately, no one was inside the house, and there were no casualties. However, Zhang Ping suffered severe injuries, and it took more than 10 hours of rescue efforts to save him. Lu Xiaojun cautiously mentioned to Su Hui that he wanted to visit Zhang Peng. He had endured a calamity, and going to check on him might be a way to put an end to their more than 10 years of brotherhood. Su Hui agreed. Before Lu Xiaojun left, Su Hui said, take that 40,000 and give it to him. No one wants to take advantage of him. Upon reaching the hospital and seeing Zhang Peng, whose body was covered in bandages, Lu Xiaojun's heart was filled with mixed emotions. Little did he know that, for all these days, he was the first person to visit Zhang Peng. At the moment Lu Xiaojun walked in, Zhang Peng's heart skipped a beat. He hadn't expected Lu Xiaojun to come see him. These days, he felt like a pitiful creature forgotten by the world, unable to see any light. The only ones he could converse with were the nurses. When asked why no one came to visit him, he felt a deep sense of desolation. Suddenly, he realized that he had failed miserably in life. There were moments when he thought of Lu Xiaojun, and his heart ached. He repeatedly pondered the words Su Hui used to scold him, almost able to recite them by heart. He felt that Su Hui's words had struck a chord within him because, in essence, he was indeed such a person. No matter what he thought, at the moment he saw Lu Xiaojun, his heart skipped a beat, feeling a bit relieved and, joyful. He even felt that, even if Lu Xiaojun came to mock him, he would still be happy. Lu Xiaojun, of course, wasn't there to mock him, he came to check on him. Putting aside all previous unpleasantness, he inquired about Zhang Peng's injuries, how he was feeling, and if there was anything he wanted to eat. Zhang Peng, acting as if nothing had happened, complained about pain all over, especially in his buttocks, unable to move without extreme discomfort. Lu Xiaojun suggested turning him to alleviate the pain, but Zhang Peng insisted it was useless, he had already tried it and was still in agony. For an instant, the two seemed to be transported back to the past, back to a time without barriers or grudges. However, this resurging brotherhood didn't last long. Lu Xiaojun had to leave. He placed 40,000 yuan on Zhang Peng's bedside and handed him a framed photo wrapped in paper. He mentioned that he and Su Hui were planning to leave, and it might be challenging to meet again in the future. He hoped Zhang Peng would complain less and live more freely. As Lu Xiaojun walked to the door, Zhang Peng couldn't hold back any longer and shouted, Lu Xiaojun. Yes? I wish you and Su Hui, happiness. Thanks. After Lu Xiaojun left, Zhang Ping opened the wrapped photo and was surprised to see a picture of him and Lu Xiaojun. The setting sun cast long shadows as the two 17 or 18 year old youths stood side by side in front of a row of old houses, their arms around each other, smiling. This was from the time when Zhang Ping moved out of the rental house, and Lu Xiaojun found it in his empty room. He didn't blame him for leaving the photo under the bed, covered in dust and grime. Zhang Ping carefully picked it up, bought a frame, and placed it inside. 
this wasn't just a photograph, it was their friendship, something he had once cherished the most. Zhang Ping cried, sobbing uncontrollably, as the earth seemed to shake beneath him.